Kerbal Space Program 2 was released last Friday to mixed reviews, but already the modding scene is hard at work to improve upon some of the problems many people are currently running into. But if you want to see my opinions on that, check out my previous video, KSP2 The Honest Truth, because in this one I'll be taking a look at some mods already released that improve upon the base game experience. There are currently two mod loaders that I know of for KSP2, Space Warp and Bepin X, and as the game doesn't have official mod support yet, you'll need to pick up one of them. Personally, I've gone with Space Warp, as it's easy enough to install and all the mods I'll be listing in this video use it. To install Space Warp, you'll need to head over to their GitHub, grab the latest release and extract the contents of the zipped folder into your KSP2 root folder, the one which contains the .exe to launch the game. If you run the game through Steam, this can easily be found by right-clicking the game, going to Manage and Select selecting browse local files. The folder brought up will be the folder you want to extract Space Warp to. Once Space Warp has been installed, load the game once and you should be greeted with a new section on the main menu. Mods. Amazing. And with that, we can begin making the game good. Quick disclosure before delving into the list of mods, I will be providing links to every single one of them in the description of this video, so if you want to go and check them out yourselves, you'll know exactly where to find them. Just hit the show more, check out the description, and all of them will be there. Now that I've talked about a mod loader, let's begin with the only mod on this list that won't use it. This isn't really a mod as per se, but more an update to the files already in the game, and its purpose? To stop this. In order to install this mod, go to the page's GitHub, click on code and download the zip. Then open up your Kerbal Space Program 2 global folder, which can be found under C, Users, Your Personal Profile, App Data, Local Low, Intercept Games, Kerbal Space Program 2 global. If you cannot find App Data within your profile, you may need to enable viewing hidden folders. I won't go into that here, but a quick Google should do the trick. Once you're in the global folder, replace the physics JSON with the new one downloaded from GitHub, and suddenly, Floppy Rocket be gone. Okay, and now for the actual mods. To begin with, one you may or may not like. What even is this video? Top 10 mods and I start off the actual mods saying that. But personally, I don't like the new controls in the VAB, but then I also didn't like WASD controller in KSP1. But I know a lot of people do swear by it. Essentially, this mod allows you to use the WASD and Q and E keys to move around in the VAB when you hold right click. You may prefer it, you may prefer the stock system. I prefer the old controls, but maybe this is a little better, especially for getting to some of those hard to reach places. To install this, go to the space dock page linked and download it. Open the zip and drag the contents into your KSP root folder, once again the place where the .exe to run the game is located. I didn't know this when I first downloaded this mod, but it can be enabled or disabled by pressing Alt W. Useful as when enabled, it makes the next mod a little tricky to use. I almost can't believe it. It's been less than a week and we already have more or less the old part action window system back from the first game. This is huge. This was one of my biggest gripes with the new game. And guess what? Whenever you right click a part with this mod, you aren't waiting seconds for the window to open up. This mod does seem a little buggy right now though. Not always popping up when you right click a part and somewhat conflicting with WASD controller when that is enabled. But I infinitely prefer it to the parts manager. That being said, the parts manager can certainly be useful and as far as I could tell this mod disables that. In an ideal world, we'd have both. Who knows, maybe soon we will. Another issue I ran into whilst filming for this is that with this mod enabled, you're unable to change how much fuel is in a tank, as this mod does not display that information yet. Being unable to access the old part manager, I could not do this the stock way either. I'm hoping a future update will fix this, because that is certainly quite problematic. To install this, go to the space dock page linked, download the mod and open the zip folder. This time though, head into the space warp folder and then into mods and move Kerbal Part Manager straight into there. And now, no more Freezy Part Manager. Quick afterthought I'm adding after filming everything for this video, this mod as it currently stands may not be all that great right now. Whilst getting footage, I couldn't select any of my RCS. I couldn't set the brake levels on my wheels. Obviously, the aforementioned unable to set fuel levels is a problem, and I found out previous versions had both Part Manager and the Part Window. However, the developer Shadow Dev decided to disable the whole manager in a recent update. Maybe I'm just missing it, but until we can change fuel levels and set brake percentages, I might stick with the stock system, even if I have to wait years for that window to open. Clearly, this top 10 mods is off to a cracking start. From here on out, I promise they're all fantastic. 
Once again, something I thought was sorely missing from Kerbal Space Program 2. Thrust away info per stage. Stage info adds that back in, and it even updates in real time if you have it open while flying, so you have a constant readout of your thrust to weight ratio and delta V. One thing I'd like to see added is this information for different celestial bodies, but right now this is a huge improvement over the base game. This mod is now built seamlessly into the Flight Engineer Report while in the VAB, and if you want to see it in flight, you can access it from the app bar on the bottom of the screen. Another useful feature this adds is the remaining burn time per stage, something else I really missed in stock KSP2. To install this mod, once again, follow the link to Space Dock, download it, and extract the zip into to your KSP2 root folder. This is a simple mod that is basically MechJeb's precise maneuver controls from KSP1. Rather than being limited to pushing or pulling your maneuver node, once you've created a node, you can open this handy tool and input values to increase or decrease prograde, normal, and radial with much greater precision. You can also move the node around at the bottom of the menu. This will make fine-tuning maneuvers much, much nicer. To install, back to Space Dock, download the mod, and as with Better Parts Manager, move the contents of the zip directly into the Space Warp Mods folder. I'm not sure if this was a bug in stock KSP2 or just overlooked, but not being able to pin vital pieces of information like your apoapsis, periapsis, intersects and more when updating a maneuver node was irritating at best. This simple mod fixes that and keeps that information pinned whilst changing a maneuver. And that's it. Super simple fix, but for me, a complete game changer. To install, space dock, download, move contents of zip into the root folder, BAM! Sticky Orbit Markers achieved. Another thing missing from KSP2. This adds some of the functionality of the old cheat menu as well as having some of the cheat settings easily accessible from flight. This mod does also allow you to disable gravity and aerodynamics as well as make parts indestructible. So it does include a few extra features that the game settings are missing. On top of that, it also allows you to refuel your vessel at any time, which might be useful for some testing purposes and was a feature in the Hyper Edit mod from KSP1. This mod may not be useful for everyone, but it does bring back a few things from the first game that were missing, and may help out with some more interesting designs. To install, space dock again, download, and put the contents of the zip into the space warp mods folder. This combined with the previous mod and we basically have the old cheat menu from KSP1 back, as this mod will allow you to set any desired orbit around any desired celestial body in the Kabola system. Very useful if you want to test out designs without having to fly the entire mission, or even rescuing a space station that decided it wanted to fall out of orbit for no apparent reason. Your space station orbit got bugged, it's suborbital. Oh no! Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to land this, and one of the mods that I have got should allow me to change that orbit. So, yeah. I'll land this at the space center, right? And then when I have done that, we'll come back to this real quickly and use one of the mods that I've got to place it back in the orbit that it was at. That is silly. Why has that done that? Without this mod rescuing that craft, I honestly think I would have rage quit and not picked up the game again for a few days. This mod also allows you to land and rendezvous wherever you want at the click of a button. And in my opinion, with how buggy the game is right now, is probably one of the most important mods on this list, as it's not just fantastic for testing designs, but also a lifeline when the game decides to throw a bug your way. Way. To bring up the Lazy Orbit menu, you can find it on the app bar, and to install it, once again, space dock, download, and move the contents of the zip into your KSP2 root folder. Feeling the game UI is a little too big and you want to be able to better see your rockets exploding? Or maybe you're sat really, 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 really far away from your PC and can't quite see all the little numbers. Well, this mod has you covered. In order to change the UI size, all you need to do is go into the game settings and into user interface where there will be a slider. Drag this to personal taste and be happy that the UI doesn't cover up your cursed creations. Install, space dock, download, contents of zip into root folder. I feel like I've said that a million times now, but unless I go over it for each mod, I know there will be mistakes made.
Not got enough information from the stock game about your current orbit? Want to know how long a burn will take before you start it? Do you like reading lots and lots of numbers? Well, Microengineer is the mod for you. Honestly, this mod is amazing. It adds so many readouts that the base game is lacking, like burn times, precise orbit heights, current inclination, eccentricity, and much, much more. There are multiple tabs within the menu that you can open and close whenever you like, so you're not overwhelmed by too much information at once. And once again, this menu can be opened from the app bar. With this mod, I now might have all the information I need to perform precise interplanetary burns, and not have to guesstimate where I'll be ending up half of the time. Precise orbits can be achieved, and yeah, it's just wonderful all this information. This mod even mentions that all the information it provides is already calculated within the game. This just gives us a nice shiny UI so that we can see the numbers ourselves. Numbers that sometimes are quite important to know when flying missions. Installing this, go to Space Dock, download the file, move the contents of the zip folder into the KSP2 root folder. Enjoy your newfound information. Over the course of KSP2's development, I feel a lot of the features that these mods provide will be implemented into the base game. But while we wait for those updates, well, the modding scene has us covered. All of these now on my install, I feel a lot more confident about my next project, which will be a Juna space station and maybe more, unless the poll results have drastically changed since releasing this video. A big thanks to Mr. Blue Star, Pentium, So Not The Hero Type, That Unreal Guy, Zaretya, and the rest of my patrons and members for their continued support. I have been Karnasa, like and subscribe for more, and I will see you later.